There you are. What do you think of my little opening titles, my new opening titles? Good morning to you. It's Saturday the 19th of July 2014. Chris Reardon with today's this week's uh, long United Kingdom talk chat show. Uh, I'm just rushing around this morning. Really. I got up a bit late. I don't know why. Um, I did go out last night. I had a night off last night. And I went to see a friend of mine do his karaoke night in the Prince of Wales, which is in Wilsdon, London. You had to go through Neesden. I had to go through Neesden to get there. All these shops are open like at 11 o'clock at night. Food shops and, well, I mean, you know, you, you do get shops open at that time of night. But it, it, it seemed to me like the entire street was still open. I'm sure I even saw a hairdresser's open going along through Neesden there yesterday. Anyway, so um, I got there about about a quarter to midnight, and this this keeps happening on a Friday. I I have my usual sleep in the afternoon, and I actually go to bed a little bit earlier on a Friday afternoon now than I would do on a work night, so that I can get up a little bit earlier and perhaps go out. But it just doesn't seem to be happening like that. And I got up on Friday night about 7pm, come downstairs, had some dinner. Can't remember what I had. I think I had veggie burgers, I think, as usual. <laughs> one, of, one of my staple diets, that veggie burgers. Linda McCartney, she does two types. She, well, she actually does three types now that I've located. Uh, there's like the plain old burger with no flavourings, which is all right. You know, you can put a bit of cheese on yourself. There's the Linda McCartney... Um, burgers, quarter pounders with mozzarella cheese injected into them. And when you put it under the grill, this you can see this it's, it, it's a bit disgusting really. You can actually see the cheese oozing out the burger almost like you're squeezing a spot. <laughs> you probably don't. You're probably too old to do that now, aren't you? Squeeze the spot. I think Daniel, who's with us this morning in Camberley. Good morning, Daniel, who loves the new intro. Thank you, Daniel. Yes, a man made that for me. In um, well, Where was he? I think he was in Sweden or Switzerland, somewhere like that. There's, uh, those of you that wonder where I get all these little bits and pieces that change occasionally, you know, the show openers and other bits and pieces. Um, there's a site called Fiverr.com, F-I-V-E-R-R, or it might be F-I-V-V-E-R or double V double R. I can't remember exactly now. But there's a site called Fiverr.com. And if you go on there, there's all these people, thousands of people that will make something for you for a fiver and it could be anything you could get someone like me who will say i will say whatever you want me to do to on a one minute video send me the script send me five dollars or five pounds there's actually two sites there's a five dollar site and there's a five pound site let me just turn my air conditioning down a little bit further it's quite warm in here today um, obviously, you want to go on the, the dollar version because that's going to work out cheaper, probably about... Because uh, uh, our exchange rates are very good at the moment, probably about £3.20 instead of £5 to do these things. Um, there's people that will design you logos, um, will write you essays, make a picture, all sorts of strange and wonderful things on there. So do have a look if you ever want anything done. Fiverr.com is what that's called, and it'll only cost you $5. And I, if you type in video intros, up comes all these people who will make you video intros for $5, and a basic one. Now, you can also have more done to them. That video you sh just saw cost me 10 That one was... I think that one was $20. OK, because I asked for it in high definition and I wanted a couple of other bits done to it. And it, it's fantastic. I've, I've used this service now. Oh, I'm, I must be about 20 times over the last couple of years. And I've never, ever been disappointed. It's really, really very good. If there's something perhaps you can do, you know, and you, you might want to, I don't know, um, do. Oh, I'm just trying to think now. <laughs> Write someone a story. A short story. You could go on that site and, and, you know, put your headline up there. I will write a short story for you with your family's names for $5. Okay? Like one page long. 
And then you could have extras, additional. If you would like the, so the story to go on for two pages, order an extra gig, which would be another $5. Do you see what I mean? So most people have the basic one. On this occasion, I had the high definition and all that done. And you just send him the photos that you want. I sent him four video clips. And um, that that was all well and good. So that that's where the um, that's where the uh, uh, videos come from, Daniel. And it was so interested. All right. Um, Daniel wants to know where is today's item of interest behind you? Oh, I haven't got anything there today, have I? Are you just? Oh, I've got something here. Today's item of interest is a little sunflower, which sings. Da, 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 we're walking, walking on sunshine. Whoa, we're walking on sunshine. <laughs> so we'll put the item of interest, the, the singing sunflower, is sitting behind me today in the studio. All right. Uh, there was another reason, actually, that I had to change the opening intro. Is because sometimes you might see little ads going across the bottom of the screen or uh, stuff like that, whether you're watching a recorded or the live. I don't know if the, the live show carries ads. Can someone tell me if it does or not? Do you get ads on the bottom? I'm not quite sure, but certainly the recorded one does. And that piece of film, that, um, I don't know what you would call it, the template, uh, uh, it would seem now has been copywritten by someone. So by using that film... I could no longer have the little ads come up. Now, let me just... <laughs> if you think I'm making thousands of pounds out of this, you couldn't be more wrong. <laughs> you really couldn't. Put it this way. So I've got adverts on some of my videos. Now, the viewership, on in comparison to some videos, certainly my brother-in-law's, now he gets a few hundred viewers per video. I get less than 100, sometimes 50, sometimes 60 generally less than 100, unless I do an advert, and then it, it shoots up again. But to actually make money out of any of these YouTube videos, you've got to have tens of thousands of people watching, and I don't, okay? Now, I am signed up to this ad thing where you're supposed to get a little bit of money every time someone watches it. Put it this way, I've been signed up to that since last September, and I think I have earned, ring, $9. <laughs> but we don't it doesn't bother me not in the slightest um, and it was my brother-in-law that got me to, to sign up for that which was a good idea but um, quite honestly it's, <laughs> it won't even buy a day shopping will it <laughs> so if I was to try and sit here and do this as a job I would probably starve to death I really would on the other hand that's a good way of losing weight wouldn't it? I could just give up all my jobs and sit here each day for an hour and talk rubbish and earn $9 in about a year. <laughs> so that's how it works. It did make me laugh once. I did a little video at the Mayflower where I do the quiz nights on Tuesdays. Uh, that's the Mayflower in Rotherhithe. Tuesday nights, 8.30 to 10.30 p.m. Be nice to see you down there. Come say hello if you are. And... Um, I had the camera out and I'm videoing various people in there. And then some some bright spot, young young lad he was, he says, um, oh, um he says, How many people watch this show and how much do you get per viewing? He thought I was he was being done out of money then. You know. It, it was one of those people that hasn't got much of a sense of humour. And you sort of say something to it and then they look up, you know, in, in like a, a cloud. Quizzically, not quite understanding what's going on around them. I do wonder sometimes if it's because people are walking around with their blooming mobile phones stuck on that. There, there is no... The senses of humour have all changed, haven't they? If, if they have one, indeed. I was watching this programme on the television this week. Um, the Secret Lives of Students. And it was quite interesting to see what they get up to while they're at university. And there was one girl who had been talking to this boy on the Twitter and on the phone. She'd never actually met him. 
and she just came across as I, I don't know as, as as not having not having a personality. You looked into her eyes, and they were kind of dead. And she'd got into trouble with her rent for the student accommodation. Now, certainly in London, I can't remember where the university was now, but certainly in London, there are now quite a lot of places that have big buildings built specifically for students. There's a new one in Hammersmith, actually right next to and on top of um, the Lorry Arms, where I do the karaoke every other week, which incidentally is there next Saturday. So what's that? Lorry Arms Karaoke, Saturday the 26th of July 2014 in Hammersmith. And it does make me laugh. Outside these places is usually a big sign saying affordable student housing. And then you find out how much it costs. And it's not anywhere near affordable. I mean, it really isn't. And then, and, and then they would say to you, oh, yeah, but it's really nice inside. Yeah, it might be nice inside. I don't think it's affordable. It's very, very expensive to live in these places. Anyway, so she was living in one of these places and she didn't have the money for the rent. So she gets on the phone to her mum and dad. Um, I don't know which, which one it was talking to her on there. Oh, I've just, oh, I've just, I've just worked something out. Oh, that's good. I've just worked out I can actually make a make a little it, there's in in front of me there's a vi there's the video you're seeing hopefully on the left and it used to cover the whole screen I've just realized I can <laughs> after sitting here for over a year doing this I've just realized I can make the screen screen smaller how mad is that anyway so she rings up her mum and dad and, and starts asking for a bit of money which is you know is is understandable um I didn't really do that ever until until I got married. And then we were on holiday once at Pontins. Was it Pontins? Yes, it was. It was Pontins. And I kept running out of money and I would ring up my mum and she yeah, okay. and then she would send a cheque. So I can't even remember paying that back. Isn't that awful? I, I do feel bad about that. Borrowing money like that. Anyway... <laughs> She and and I don't I I couldn't work out what was going on on the phone, but the parents didn't didn't seem to want to send any money or I I I, I can't I can't criticise the parents because I, I don't know what was going on, and then she started saying, "But you keep telling me that you've been putting money away from me ever since I was a little girl." Well, I'm asking for some of that now. And it sounded to me like they were saying no or go and get a job. She she came across as as someone who, 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 who I, don't, I can't explain it really. There was just no personality there. And I thought, what a bloody cheek she had. Ringing up her parents, asking them for the money that they had been saving for her. I don't know when for, maybe for when she got married. Or when she came to a certain age. A lot of parents do that for their children. But I think it's a bloody cheek for the child to then ring up and ask for it. Do you? Or am I being stupid here? Do let us know what you think. There's an email address. A address. Uh, a drink address. My email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. There is a Skype. If you're watching live, watching and listening live, you can join in live. How do you know if it's live? Well, it's uh, just coming up to 17 minutes past 12 on Saturday, the 19th of July, 2014, UK time. OK, so we're on British summer time. If you're anywhere else in the world, it's 11.15 GMT. If that's the time where you are now, then you are indeed watching us live and you can join in live. The Skype in, if you've got Skype, the Skype in is all one word, Chris Reardon, C-H-R-I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N. Skype in, Chris Reardon, C-H-R-I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N. 
R E A R D O N. And I'm just just kind of wondering where my little um, there's usually a little sign up there somewhere to to say um, there it is. So we can put that there. We are. There we are. If you're watching this live, you'll see a little thing come up now with the other details as well. And there's a phone in number as well. If you want to dial in, then we have a local London number: o two o eight one double three six three five eight o two o eight one double three six three five eight um ben says the girl obviously thought the world owed her a living well i think she did ben i mean she, did you did you watch the program she just had one of those faces that you wanted to slap <laughs> mind you i think i've got one of those in fact i slap myself now oh it's it's actually quite nice. Some people pay for that, you know, to be slapped. Oh, it's another subject altogether. Um. <laughs> Good morning to Terry H this morning, who says, hello, just checking in. Heading to Scarborough shortly. Thought I'd say hello. Oh, what are you doing up in Scarborough? What they got up there? Is it cheap booze today, Terry? You know, because you'll go anywhere where there's cheap drink going, won't you? Hey, mate? <laughs> Oh, by the way, Terry, you know my first utility, right? It's gone down, £9. What am I paying now? I'll tell you in a minute. Let me go to my filing cabinet. I should tell you. On my regular outgoings piece of paper, my my first utility has gone down to... Bing! £49 a month. Thank you. Oh. I haven't made adjustment on that yet. Forty-nine pounds a month. My um, I'll put that down. That's, that's gone down from fifty-eight pounds a month to forty-nine pounds a month. And the main reason is I'm not using any gas. I mean, absolutely nothing at all. The only t the only gas being used is to keep the pilot light on. And I'm actually considering turning that out. Ben Parker will know that. Ben, is it worth turning the pilot light out? Do you save that much money? I, I've worked out, our friend Ben Parker, that's the guy who went, I went to see his karaoke last night. Um, I, I had a great, I had a lovely time. I was only there about an hour and a quarter, but I have a lovely time sitting there. But, oh my God, it was so hot in there. It was so hot. Outside, the, the temperature indicator on my car said 24, which is 20, 48, 58, 60, 70, which is about 78, 79, 80 degrees. That was outside last night at a quarter to 12 at night. And inside, my God, oh, it was really hot in there. Poor old Ben, he was sweating away. He had a towel next to him. And now and again, he patted his bald head. <laughs> and there was this mad Chinese looking woman who was dancing all the time. I love it. Oh, I love karaoke. The characters that come out. You do get some right arseholes, though, don't you, Ben? No names mentioned. There are there are one, two. There are two people only that I really wouldn't miss if they never turned up to another karaoke again. Two, just two people, right? And there's another two people who have got dreadful voices and think they can really sing well. I mean, I mean, really bad voices. And they keep coming, these people. <laughs> She'll have them barred. <laughs> um, Shania says, what is your phone number? I told you, so. Well, have you already just joined us, dear? Hello, Shania. On the Isle of Wight, 20 81336358, okay? 020-8133-6358. And Shania says, Hi, Chris. Finally got to listen today. I've had the carnival preparations to do the past few Saturdays, ready for the first carnival today. Oh, you're busy, aren't you? You're busy. That's fantastic. It's always good to be busy, my darling. Um, yes, if you want to know anything about anything, just ask Ben Parker. He is the fountain of all knowledge. Fantastic, honestly. And I'm not taking the mick or anything. He really does know a lot about all sorts of things. I think he's the same, just about the same age as me. I think you are, aren't you, Ben? I can't remember now. Um, wanted to meet you, make you feel at home like at Chariots. Well, I hate to tell you this, Ben, but I did have a little visit there afterwards. <laughs> all I'm saying, I'll give you the figure, four. That's all I'm saying, four. <laughs> Terry H is going to his mum's caravan. 
Uh, you're a very low, low user of gas, though, so it's going to so it's going to be. Oh, sorry, you a very low user of gas, though, so it's going to. But you've not been using it just to prove a point. No, 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 no. I wouldn't use it anyway. In the summer, gas because I've got solar panels upstairs. They give me the hot water <laughs> when the sun's out, which has been. I mean. At the moment, with the weather we've had, the water comes out the tap so hot you can't put your hand under it. That's how hot the, the sun makes it. Yeah, so, so that has gone down, actually. Uh, Ben's 53, so just a touch older than me, aren't you? Yeah. Uh, Daniel says... Nine, $9 would pay for all your heating bill for the year. Yeah, you're probably right, actually. <laughs> I always make the screen as small as possible and then seat it at the other side of the room when I watch your show. You look much better. <laughs> he says, turn the pilot light out, but can you relight it? If not for a fiver, I will show you out. That's the only thing. That's the only thing, Daniel. Is it easy? To... <laughs> that's what worries me, you see. You know, what if we suddenly have, like they had in America... OK, a polar vortex, you know, in the middle of summer, come over the UK. And I want to quickly turn that central heating back on. Will I be able to relight the pilot? Relight my pilot. Your song is the only desire. Relight my pilot. Because I feel so good. And then Lulu would rush into the house and do her solo number, wouldn't she? I'm not quite sure how to relight the pilot if it goes. Um, and Daniel says, Daniel says it's very easy to relight the pilot. Isn't there, don't you take off the bottom? Now, what have I, do you want to know what I've, I've got a potterton? Oh, I don't know where that would, where the, um, one, one minute. I've got, this is, this is the room of the instructor. Look, I've got another Dalek here. Exterminate, exterminate. Oh, that's what we should have here today. I put in next to the flower. Have you seen my little Dalek? There we are. Um, I've got a box here with all my instructions. It's a, I, I know it's a Potterton Prima. Is it a case of taking the thing off the bottom where the control is and pushing a button in? Or is there two buttons to push in? Where does the spark come from? Do, do, you, is it, do you push a button and then click, click, and then push another button to spark it? Or do I need matches? Because I don't, have, don't really have matches in the air. Oh, yes, I do. There is a box somewhere when I like my smelly candles. Have you got any of those at home? They're a bit dear, aren't they? Oh, Daniel's on the phone. Let's see if we can get him up there. One moment. Good morning, Daniel. Hello, Chris. How, How lovely to hear your voice. <laughs> I can give you some instructions on your boiler. Is this the first time ever that you've called into the show? No, I've phoned before. When was that? Um... About a month ago. Oh, was it? No, 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 no. Longer than that, me old mate. Was it? Daniel, where are you? Where are you from? You got a slightly darker skin, same as myself, actually. Or are you English? I am English. Parents? English. I'm just tall, dark, and handsome, and born like it. Go back a bit further. I, I don't know. I think we're all English. Twickenham. I, Twickenham. That's oh, pretty, okay, okay. That's fair pretty enough. English, isn't it? Yeah, I drive through there every night. Yeah, a lot of people think of Twickenham as a really nice, like, little village-type place. I bet it was like that when you were there, but now, God Not dear like me. Now. Steve no. Allen lives in Twickenham, your friend. He does live in Twickenham, that's right, yeah. Apparently kebab shops and chicken fried places all over the place. That's it, yeah, that's it. He's not but keen you... on Marks and Spencers, is he? No, no. <laughs> but you must, uh, I'll find up to tell you, you've got to turn your pilot light off if you're not using the boiler. Really? Yeah, you're just burning gas unnecessarily. You know how tight you are with your gas. Well, You've yeah. got to turn it off, and it's very easy to ignite it when the winter comes. I know how to turn it off. Go to the cupboard, push the lever up. Yes? Yeah, yeah. Or pull it down, whichever way it is at Well, the you moment. don't have to go to the cupboard. Take the bottom of the boiler off. Yeah. And there's a little, there's, there'll be a little knob there. You can click round. That'll turn the pilot light off. So, then, say, sorry, say that again for me. There's a little knob. The right. bottom of your boiler, you just twist and it will turn the pilot light, turn the pilot light out. Right. And to reignite it, you push that knob in and clip your ignition switch like an old, like an old gas hob. So there's 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 two oh. there's two things in at the bottom of the boiler yeah. that 
near near yeah. the control the thing what I turn around, yeah? That's it, yeah. Don't so, turn your gas meter off, you don't need to do that. Oh really? But of course I do live locally and I can show you how to do all this, you know. For a fiver. Th- oh god, <laughs> no, I don't I'm oh I'm cu- I've come over all night and I've just spent, you know, twenty dollars on a new intro. <laughs> it is funny actually though isn't it you know we we do, I, I wouldn't I, I wouldn't i wouldn't think twice about spending 100 pounds on an intro right but there are things like when someone would say oh yeah I've, I've just started um mountain biking now i've got a bike you know cost me 200 200 quid brand new i know um, what do you pay for your bike oh one and a half thousand pounds how much a thousand half pound on a bike, and it's very much of what you're into, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It what is. are you into? Is. What are you into, Daniel? Have you got any hobbies and things? Well, I have got a thousand pound bike. But have you really? Yeah, well, I've never ridden it. It's never seen the road, ever seen the road. Um, when did you buy that? I bought it in Germany. I've got it sent over from Germany. When? Uh, eighteen months ago. Why haven't you? I was going to go on a big fitness soon, you know, but it never happened. Why haven't you used it then? What? Not at all. Not at all. Ne- those tyres have never seen the road. <laughs> Why? Oh, it's just a midlife crisis. How, how old are you? Forty. Forty-two. Yeah. No, forty. Forty. Are you happy yeah. with your you weight? Your mid- did you have your midlife crisis about twenty years ago? Was it? No, I'm having it now. <laughs> 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 what did you do for yours? Um. I don't know, really. Turn the heat My, off. <laughs> I turned I turn the heat on for a whole day. I thought that would make me feel better. It just, just sent me into depression. It really <laughs> did. I saw doctor medication and everything because I well, went into depression because the heat was... I could hear the meter go... I was at my They're sister's. Whirling around. I was at my sister's and suddenly I heard this noise. So I quickly rung up Ron. I said, are you around my house? He said, yeah, why? I said, turn it off. <laughs> No, are you happy with 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 your weight or not, and things like no, that? No, 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 I've got to lose. I've actually, I was thinking of you the other day because I was at Friendly Park because I've had a few appointments up there, and it turns out my problem is I'm low in B12. And where do you Have get you heard that, of that before? Where do you get that from? Well, I, I don't produce it, or I can't um, take out the foods I eat, so I'm going to have to have injections for the rest of my life. Oh, really? And what, yeah, what did you yeah. say that was called again? B12 deficiency. And oh, you don't get it from food then? or, or yeah, some... you do, you do, but some people can't um, absorb it from food. So you have to go in once every six months and have oh, an well, infusion that... of it with a Oh, well, that's not too bad. Once every... I have to go once every three months for something. Yeah, you know? but... So don't stop moaning once every <laughs> six months. And I bet that's down your local doctors as well, isn't it? No, no, it's at the hospital, and then you go to your doctors for your top-up injections. Okay, someone's but, trying to. I think someone else is trying to call in. Um, I can't take another call while I'm on one. All right, my darling. So if you if you just so wait, it's probably so, only Ronnie anyway. No, it's a London number. If you wait until that this call is over, and then you'll be able to call in because I, I mean, you know, in in an ideal situation, there would be a bank of people sitting in the room <laughs> next door taking calls and asking people and, and placing them in a queue. Well, I'm afraid that's not like that here. There's me and that's it. I mean, I've really pushed the boat out today, Daniel. Look, do you know what this is? It's an I'll air conditioning the unit. The air I'll conditioning stop. unit is on. I even is try it? not to. I have all this stuff installed, but I'm too tight to turn the bloody stuff on. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what? Seriously, as soon as I finish this show, I'm going to go down and turn that lever off or, 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 or do it at the boiler. No, just clip, just take the bottom tray off. It's yes. bottom tray, uh, you said. Wasn't yes, it? yes. Yeah. So there's a bottom tray. Yes. You'll be able to just click it off. Don't turn the don't turn the gas meter off. That's not necessary. What? Why? Why would I not do that? Is it? Does it? Well, introduce... because because what can happen is when you try and relight your pilot Air. in the yep. winter, okay. all okay. the gas that's sitting in the pipe that goes from the boiler all the way back to the gas meter yep. might have gone. Has it gone and out then, of date? Does it go no, out of date? No, 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 not out of date. <laughs> <laughs> um, it will um, it, trust me don't turn the I wouldn't turn the meter off you've got nope. control on the boiler you can do that so. fair enough and it will save you you know if you're not using the boiler there's no point in burning the pilot and no. plus you'll burn out a thing called the thermal couple 
yeah. that's in there and then you'd have to get your wallet out and get an engineer to fit a new one and that yeah. would break your heart wouldn't yeah. it yeah even Ben, Ben, Ben Parker. Uh, seriously, Ben. He's so knowledgeable about all sorts of things. He's, he also says here: shut the boiler off, short period, switch off the time control. Uh, when no time control is fitted, turn the boiler thermostat to naught. Yeah, but the pilot light will still be on, even if the thermostat is at naught, won't it? Yeah, it will be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That pilot light. Shut here we off. are for longer periods. Turn, 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 turn. He sent me all these instructions here, basically, which is um. Uh, fantastic. When the boiler is first lit, there might be a smite, slight smell. Is that right? Uh, yeah, there can be. Yours is an open fluid boiler, they call it, which is quite an old-fashioned boiler. All right, yeah. Like yeah, I, I mean... I before about making sure you've got the vent open and a CO detector in that room. I have, yes. That's the only thing with open fluid boilers. You've just got to keep an eye on them. But you get it serviced regularly, do you? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah every I'll year, actually... Funnily enough, I say every year, a year and a half has passed this time. So yeah, I get should, it serviced. should get that done soon. But when I've had it serviced before, you know, I've said to the bloke, I said, how's it looking? He said, well, he said, remarkably good condition. He said, there's no rust on this whatsoever. He said, yeah. and it, this this is about 18 years old, isn't it? And, I, and I'm yeah. like, well, yeah, it is. I said, um, is it more efficient to buy another one? He said, well, it would be a lot more efficient. He said, but in all honesty, the new ones don't last as long as the old ones. He said, I would leave it in place until it just doesn't work anymore. That's what you he said. You don't use it anyway, so. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. the new ones, so. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. when he does the service, do you, does he do the smoke test? He put a smoke pellet, Oh, yeah, yeah, he puts the thing and in, he, and then yeah, he, and goes he goes outside, outside and, wa- yeah. and watches it. what comes out the pipe at the top. Do you know what that's for? Do you know what he's doing? Uh, see now it's not blocked. No, no, no. He's making sure that what it go, what goes through, nothing, none of the smoke appears in your house. It only comes out the top because that smoke is so dense. If there's any cracks in the flue, yeah, you'll start seeing it inside your house, and you'll know that the flue's at it. The flue is that metal thing that goes up That's through the it. through the loft, isn't it? Through the loft to a ridge tile at yeah, like the top. Yeah. Is it on yours? Oh, ridge tile. What? 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 Uh, the centre, does it go up in your loft and go to the centre of your roof out of the top, out of the yes. roof? Yes, yes, yeah. it does. Yeah. And actually, when you look up there, you can see daylight. Mm, that's it. But no water comes in. No, How that's does that it. happen then? Why, why, why don't that's I see? just it's just because it needs ventilation. So they design right. it. They're quite clever the way they design it. So it's uh, but your sounds fine. I think yeah. you'll boil it well alone. Just turn the pilot off. I'm going to do that as soon as I finish the show. Well, I'm actually, I'm looking at my clock now and there's another 25 minutes before the show. Well, so that, that money is... you're wasting. I know. Another... Just flying out the door <laughs> as we speak. <laughs> another 25 minutes. Jesus oh, Christ. No, no, no. All that money you're wasting. Anyway, I'll <laughs> let you take your other call, Chris. All right. Nice to talk right, to you, Daniel. Thank you very Chris. much. Great shows and I'll speak to you again. If soon. I ever need boiler work, you're the man. Well, you owe me a chocolate muffin anyway. You said you're going to buy me a Tesco. W- next time I come to Camberley, I'll look for you on Skype. And we'll, <laughs> we'll, I'll meet you up in uh, in the little place up in Tesco's. All right, then. I'll speak to you soon. All right. Tell her, mate. Bye. Good luck to your family. Bye-bye Daniel. now. There we are. Daniel there. We'll have a cup of tea with him at some point, yeah. Um, Terry H says, um, uh, I, I agree, no need to turn off the gas meter, which I, which I shan't do. Thank you for my user instructions, Ben. Does that? I, I should, maybe I can print those off now. One moment. Not that I need to do that now. I've had I've had that full instructions from Mr. Boiler. Can I print that? Let me see. Oh no, doesn't doesn't print via Skype, does it? Okay, we've got a line. Uh, line is free now, boys and girls. If you want to call in now, you can do so. Line is now free. O two o eight one double three six three five eight. Uh, good morning to Ronan, who's a bit late, but listening in. Good morning, Ronan. Ronan is a great fan of uh, aircraft. And I think, I can't remember what I sent you this week. What did I send you this week? Something about air, aircraft or something like that, wasn't it? Morning to you, Ronan. Hope you're well today, sir. Um, and good morning. Where are we now? Ah, good morning to Anne McCabe. Can we hear your show actually live? I was thinking of ringing in today. Yes, you can. You're with us now live, I think, Anne. Yes, I'm on now. Let's just send her a little thing there. 
There we are. I wonder if Anne's going to ring in. Maybe that was her calling in a moment ago. I don't know. Now, where were we? Let's just see these little messages. Oh, it was her. There we are. Anne, Anne has been trying to ring. Anne, I, I, if I'm on a call, you see, I can't do it. And sometimes people call in. They're not actually listening. Millie's good at doing that. <laughs> Millie would ring in, but she wouldn't actually be listening. <laughs> Strange, isn't it? Uh, good morning to Marge in Oklahoma, who's here watching a show. Bit late, was dreaming of fairies and flying unicorns. I wish unicorns existed. That would be good, wouldn't it? Unions, uh, unicorns with a, with, a, with a thing on their head. They would exist. Going back to that TV show. Oh, Anne's, Anne's calling now. Good morning, Anne. Oh, my God. Oh, I there you are. I to Chris Reardon. Morning, Anne. This is, probably morning. The high, this is probably the highlight of your entire life. Do you know what? I'm so excited to be talking to you. Yes, it's the, exci <laughs> it's the highlight of my Saturday. So that was you calling in 0208, was it? <laughs> it was indeed, uh, yeah. I can only take one call at a time, unfortunately. Oh. It's not like LBC where there's a, n another bloke or, or girl <laughs> sitting next door, you know, queuing, lining up the calls. So, wow, bang, 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 bang. <laughs> no, well, it's, it's I thought I might me. be like number 200 in the queue, Chris. You know well, how it is. You know. Well, you were actually, but I, I recognised <laughs> your little face immediately. So I've, <laughs> I, I've now, you know, I dumped, I, I, I publicly dumped Daniel from <gasps> the phone. And there's someone else trying to call in now as well. Dear oh, me. my God. Uh, right. I think you're going to have to increase the length of your show, Chris. We, we, we just need more of you. A lot of people have suggested that they would like to see my length increased. But I don't <laughs> agree with it. You know, I think you should live with what God's given you. I really do. Oh, well, Chris, you're, you're a mature man. What can I say? You know, I can possibly comment. Look, it's Saturday morning. I've rung in to, to talk about the worst show on TV. Oh, not big bloody... Bl can I just tell you, boys and girls, this, this woman... <laughs> who's, you know, she's a nice lady, but she's got a little bit of a problem in that she <laughs> loves Big Brother. Not only does she watch it on the telly, she is she goes down to the bloody studios <laughs> every night. Uh, I don't well, know what all that's so about. So do really many, know. many millions of people, Chris. And it's just a love it or loathe it show. You know, it has its highs, it has its lows. But I'll tell you what, what a, what a season it's been. I mean, you know, it has been entertaining. Um, you know, so, yeah, it's been quite amazing what's happened. Somebody's left. Somebody's been very naughty this week. Where are you gone? And? Weekend, and it's all the talk of the papers today. Well, but I, I know you hate it. I know they, you hate it. It <laughs> can't be any news that they have to print that drivel about what's going on. There's this um, website as well that I go on. Uh, no, sorry. Uh, even the Daily Mail on the TV and entertainment section. I, I, I do because I'm too tight to buy a newspaper, Anne. You know that, don't you? Yeah. So yeah. I go to the Mail Online, <laughs> and. Um, there, there's, sometimes I'll click on the TV and entertainment section or whatever it is, and there's paragraph after paragraph of what's going on in Big Brother. The thing is, there's hardly anyone watching it. Well, there's hardly have... anyone watching this dire oh, no. drivel. Absolutely oh. dire. Well, I know we should all be out there having our barbecues in the evening and not sitting indoors watching Big Brother, but you do get the good bits and you get the bad bits. And, Ooh. you know, that's just TV, but it is very entertaining. Yeah, the lights just flickered in here. Oh, I hope we're not going to have a power cut. I always sit here worrying sometimes, <laughs> um, Anne, you know, that, that someone's going to try and break in while I'm on air and take the show over, you know, to forward their re religious extremist views of something. <laughs> no, you just never know, do you? Well, it has been a very, very um, sad week with the, the airline crash, you know, just oh, to bring that dreadfully. into the news, which is much more newsworthy than talking about Big Brother, but... Yeah, not a good week, was it, Chris? Um, I, when I first saw that story, and I thought, how can this happen? And, and then it shows you know, someone has shot that down. What, what coward you must be to shoot down a completely and utterly, totally defenceless jumbo jet. It has nothing to fight back with. It's a little bit like walking up to an old lady in the street with a hammer and banging her over the head and nicking her purse. Yeah. 
I mean, it really is absolute cowards to do something like that. No, there's nothing there that 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 a plane like that could throw back. And oh, I was listening to, funnily enough, Steve Allen yesterday, uh, who, who does a show on LBC, and he was saying some of these missiles, you know, the 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 ones that are on the ground that they fire yeah. up at. Um, usually war planes what would you call them We're fighter jets and things like that some of these missiles can fire up into the air 31 miles wow wow and you know presumably you're on a plane you wouldn't see this thing coming no and even if you did you couldn't <clears throat> get out of the way because don't it do don't it do heat seeking you know so it looks for something that's hot and then aims itself at them i, th- I don't know i don't know I haven't got one myself. <laughs> I just, oh, it's it's just yeah. tragic. It, I don't think we can really comprehend it. We just can't comprehend it this week. It's so shocking. It's so out of the blue as well. I mean, yeah. it, it's, we just don't need these these situations in society. We just don't need them. It's, life is hard enough. Mm. Tragedy mm. is just so sad, I, so I terribly that, awful. Absolute, absolute cowards to... Yeah, um, yeah. To... Uh, to, to do something like that there's a couple of messages coming in you will be pleased to know about this awful program that you keep going down there <laughs> i mean well, I, I did see a little article in the daily mail the other day big brother pesterer and it uh, there was no photo but it said uh, a lady with blonde hair kept going down to big brother and pestering the people <laughs> who were waiting in the queue do you know anything about that at all Anne? oh well <laughs> just a little bit, just a little bit. We've been having some fun down there. We've been down there with our friends, as you know, the wonderful Gabby Drag Queen, as as you know, our wonderful friend, and we've been having some fun. But the main thing yesterday, which I'm in shock and I've rung in to discuss with you, is the state of women's behaviour on TV. This oh. is the, the case, Bianca. I've, I'll just bring you up to date, but a lady called Bianca, a lady I don't know, got kicked out last night only after a few days in there in fact and yep. she was very rude she got her boobs out on national tv chris national <laughs> tv i don't know what you make of it but it was just so naughty and that is what the papers will be going on about today Terrible. but it is the state of the nation i've never seen anything like it she came out of the house walked up the catwalk to emma willis and she stood there for the world's press to see so i don't know what you make of it chris i think I, a lot of these people they do that and you've only got to open the sun and things like that mm. um and even even the fellas now are taking their tops off but i don't personally think that's as bad as getting the boots no. out but then someone listening to that remark i just made then that it's not as bad as getting someone could say that was sexist so i won't say that i will retract that no i, I, I really don't that. mind guys getting their tops off on a hot sunny day oh so tell nice. me us ladies there's, there's yeah. a lovely They're new fit. There's a lot. <laughs> hey? If they go to the gym, if they look fit and healthy, which well, reminds me, how's all your gym going? Excuse and your feet, me, Chris. I, how's I your feet getting on? Someone said to me yesterday, "Do you?" I got a little message on a certain little website on the internet, on my mobile phone, and they said the message was, "Do you go to the gym?" You see, you see? Wow. and I don't go. No, I just do swimming, Anne. I yeah. just swim. Let me do these messages for you. But first okay. of all, I've got to say hello to nephew Jimmy Butler, who's with us today. He's got his um, he's got his uh, driving test. I think next week. My nephew. Oh. Yeah, yeah, and he's he's been rebuilding with his dad, my brother-in-law Martin. They've been rebuilding a, a, a classic mini, and it's almost done. They've been at this for a couple of years now. Oh, and that's lovely. what he wants to drive. The only thing is the insurance. Over oh, yeah. £2,000 a year. Oh, my God. <clears throat> so, what's that? 180 200 pounds a month, 50 quid a week. So, they have a lot of money for a young oh. person, isn't it? He'll have to enter those um, car shows and see if he can win a few quid in those nice classic car shows with his car. Oh, yes. Yeah. He then, says, when his past is says he's going to come down and see me. But you want to, if you know, Jim, you want to go out with your dad first. Or, or, or another driver uh, onto the motorway, you know, first of all, maybe even your brother, Gary, just let, t- let him take you on the motorway <laughs> to go up there a couple of times and you'll see it's a little bit different on there. So he's got his so good luck with that. 
on the old uh, car test. Now, uh, Terry H says, I completely agree with Anne. Big Brother was brilliant last night. Thank God Bianca is gone. So who's <laughs> who's Bianca? Is this the one who got them out, is oh, it? Oh, yeah. Dirty yeah. Old I'd say the nation was Biancafied. That's my new word because of what she did. It wasn't just once or twice. It was, oh, my God. It's something you're going to have to watch, Chris. But listen, when you do, sit down with a cup of tea and a chocolate biscuit because you're going to you're gonna be in shock, Chris. And I, I do worry I'm for you, my dear. It. I'm I not do going to watch it, and that's it. <laughs> but these people on there, that that's it. You know, get yourself as much fame as you can because within a few weeks of you going off air, that's it. <laughs> I, if you showed me now a picture of all the people, I wouldn't even know them. No. I don't read the paper about this programme no. or Celebrity Jungle or mm. even X Factor. I, I don't really watch that anymore. Um, but, yeah, I, I can understand. People like it, so... That's fair enough. But that when they start getting their bits and pieces out, because that's all they've got. There well, is nothing does, else. It she does bring it down to the lowest common denominator, which is actually why she got evicted, because it doesn't matter. People think the society, we're all a depraved bunch, but we're more clever than they think. But Big Brother is actually a game. It's a wonderful game if you take it up to the highest level. But when they bring these strippers in, honestly, really, yeah. they know what they're doing. And they do get us talking. And really? Do you, think, do you think maybe that's something I should consider, you know, while I'm doing the show? <laughs> all of a sudden, yes. just take off. Chris, and be, and, that's and fantastic. Do you want me to do that now, to become topless on, on the programme? To, no, no. No, oh, but okay. Chris, we love you for your mind and your wit and your charm and your <laughs> there karaoke is no and There's... your quizzes. Oh, your quizzes are a challenge, you know. They are good, you know. There do love no... a challenge. There do love no one your... In fact, we nearly came down last week. How do you week. know my... We're going to come on Tuesday. We're coming on Tuesday. How do you know my quiz is a challenge you've never been? I have done. I've done oh, the Mayflower. Oh, yes, you have. I'm sorry. We did the video, didn't we? I beg your we pardon. We did the Mayflower. Sorry. We did the, um, <clears throat> the cherry tree. <clears throat> yes, well, yeah, oh, we've done we've done quite a few of your quizzes they're really really good they're really good chris you are brilliant we love you i'm a there, fan but there is no wit there is no charm there is there's certainly no mind up here you've got it you've got it yeah right you're the new person go into big brother next year chris Come on, <laughs> shake them all up. Shake you them all have up. got to be joking haven't you <laughs> <laughs> you have got not, not unless Chris, Cristiano, not unless Cristiano Ronaldo's there, and we have to share a bet, a double bed. <laughs> <laughs> well, you never know. Chris, have you seen the film The Hunger Games at all? No. What's that about? Well, it's apparently what a lot of Big Brothers all about this year it's all about these people that are trapped, and if they don't look after themselves, they'll kind of get you know killed off themselves it's all about survival so i just wondered like bear grill like bear Pardon? grill is it like bear grill oh i don't know is that bear grillis survival thing is yeah. it grillis is that his name i think it he's is a yeah bit, he's, he's not someone i i don't like the alpha male do you know what i mean i can't stand people well people mm. that think they are alpha males you know they lead and yeah. everyone follows and i'm not keen on those sort of sort of men type people yeah like gordon ramsay do you think the era of gordon ramsay with all his swearing and all that do you think that's kind of over because a lot of us women we don't really like all that really well, we I like classy I men like I, you Chris. and i don't like it now you've seen me out and about right yeah i swear quite a lot don't i yeah, but you do it intelligently, but and, very rarely. And now on the show, how many times have you heard me shout, swear? Yeah, you, you, you'll rarely see me do it on air. Yeah. You see, I consider certain words not swear words, right? Uh, example, um, she was a silly ass. Now, I wouldn't <laughs> consider that a swear word. And what the bloody hell do they think they're doing? I don't consider that a swear word either. Yeah, yeah. But other people might. Mm. No, and they start moaning. Eh, 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 oh, well, I don't consider it a swear. Maybe it is where you are, but it's not where I am. I think back in the day when we were growing up, because you and me are the same peer group, aren't we? And even the word bloody was actually quite a naughty word. Yes, back in it the was. Day. Correct. It was when we were and, children. And, and we didn't yes. say shut up either. We didn't say shut up. Oh, no, don't please. We, didn't, we just please. wouldn't say that to our family or parents. We just Did, wouldn't. You're not a lonely way as Essex viewer as well, are you? You yeah, are, aren't you? I'm not actually. You are, aren't you? You know that Bobby, the really <laughs> camp one. Who who is it? The really what? Bobby. Oh yes. His name's Bobby. Yeah. So, yeah. 
So oh, he sits okay. there last last week, and they were in a bar, him and two of his female friends, I think. And he's sitting there with his pint of lager. And you know that great big thing, Gemma Collins? You know, well, Jabba, Jabba yes. the Hutt. Right? Yes. So she's sitting there. She said, oh, Bobby, so you got a pint of lager. What's all that about? Oh, yes. And he's going like this. Oh, yes. Yeah, this is the new Butch Bobby. Get real, girl. <laughs> <laughs> and he picks up this pint of lager. I thought, you must. I kill myself. When I see the crying and all that, because all it's about is people who sleep with each other and people who row with each other and run these little shops. That's it. There it's is a lot of nothing. drama. But you know what, Chris? Some of us love it. Some of us who have quite innocuous little lives, oh. we like our little bit of drama because we don't really get that. Unless you're out down the Old Kent Road on a Saturday night or um, a few a few dodgy places in South London, we don't really get the drama. But it's all out there. But it's nice on the telly to watch a bit of it, isn't it? Oh, no, it ain't. No, I it think ain't. you just converted Do- me to Towie. Do just yourself, oh, you'd love it. Do yourself a favour, Anne. When we go today, when the show's finished, get your, get get on your little bus or in your little car. Go down to go down to um, Brentwood, know, Brentwood, HMV or somewhere like that, and get yourself a box set of Dad's Army. Hours of proper <laughs> oh, entertainment. Oh no, dear. that sent me to sleep. No, we watched enough of that back in the seventies. Yeah, oh, and no, why no. is it still funny now? No, it's oh, hilarious. No. We love it. I'd rather Georgia Mildred. Oh, that was good as well. Yeah, it was, that was good, some wasn't good it? programs then. Well, thank you very much for calling in, my darling. Thank you, Christopher. Have a wonderful Saturday and we'll tune in another time. Absolutely marvellous. Thank love, you, Anne. Love, Lots of love. Bye-bye, bye. darling. There's Anne. Now, there was someone else trying to call in again now. You can call in now if you want. There is a line free. When I say there's a line free, there is only one line, but it has now become free. Uh, good morning to Eloise, who says, Good morning, Chris. Back from the beach in South Carolina with Deanna, Mary, Joyce and Bev. You and Barry Manilow were the topic of conversation. Wow. Was I really? I was the topic of conversation. In the same breath as Barry Manilow. Well, that, that, I mean, that really is a... Oh, that's made, that's made my day, that has. I shall be happy forevermore listening to that. Um, Marge says, All over town, tons of garage sales today, and it's a cool 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh, that's a nice temperature, Marge. 70s, no, that's pleasant, isn't it? We'll be going after the show is over. Yeah, get those bargains and uh, send us an email, Marge. I want to know what bargains you've found today, my dear. Do let us know. If you want to join in by Skype, call in quickly. Uh, all one word, Chris Reardon, C-H-R-I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N. Or you can phone in 020 6358 020-8133-6358. Um, ben says Big Brother would only be good if they did it the same way as on Doctor Who what with monsters and all those idiots getting killed <laughs> maybe they could arrange for the whole house to actually be blown up or something like that that would make it a little bit more interesting wouldn't it Ben <coughs> Ronan says it's really a shame um, although the LA and over space going to the um, plane disaster yesterday it's really a shame, although the airspace over Ukraine had warnings and certain airlines decided to fly through there still. Yes, I, you know, I, I, I do wonder why they did that. Especially after all that commotion they lost, because they lost a bloody plane a couple of months ago. Lost the plane. How did you lose a plane? Well, they did. You know, they lost one a few months ago. And now this. Is, it, is, is there a problem at Malaysia Airlines? Or was it just coincidence difficult to know isn't it really very very difficult to know um we've got to do a happy birthday today no oh hang on are we still on that story aren't we um we're still on that story that's it yes yeah so this girl and we're going back to the student accommodation one now okay this girl the one with no personality thinks the world owes her a living or a favour, <clears throat> has been talking to this boy, uh, what was his name, possibly Troy, on the internet and hours on the phone, but they've never met. And then she sends him a message. She says, I'm really sorry to ask you this, and you can say no, but I am, I'm in desperate need here. 
She said, can you lend me £500 for rent? And first of all, and you, you see all the texts that they're sending through. Apparently it's a new, a new way of making TV programmes. And all the texts they're sending come up on little, little um, sort of labels on, on the TV screen. Um, and first of all, he says no. She says, OK. And then he says, only joking. And then she goes to meet him. And he's quite good looking. Um, about the same age as her. And they meet and they go out to dinner. And she's sitting there with a menu and he says, what are you having to eat? She, and she's like, and she looks at him, she says, are you going to buy then? And well, and he says, well, yeah, of course I'm going to buy. But I thought, I thought, you know, she she did think that everyone's, she came across as everyone owed her something. As one of those sort of people. So they had the dinner and then they parted. And I think she sent a text and said, I think I love you. And he sent one and said, I love you too. I did, did, didn't, see, didn't see anything mentioned about the £500 rent. But presumably he's going to lend her that now. And he's only just met her. I think that's a bit much, don't you? Lending someone £500 and you don't even know them. How do you know you're going to get it back? I'll tell you what, I learnt years ago, and people who are around my age, maybe if, if you're over 30, you will understand this, right? I learnt years ago, do not lend money to anyone other than your own family. And then, if you give money to your own family, give it as if it's a gift and do not expect it back. If it comes back, all well and good, but don't expect it back. If you lend, give money to a family, you know, if, if perhaps someone asked me, I would I would consider it and then Depending on the reason, yes, you can have that, right? You can pay me back, uh, uh, and I'd say, oh, I'll pay you back, and then you'd say, well, no, that's okay. And then if it came back, I would be very, very impressed. But I wouldn't expect it back. You understand what I mean? Friends or anyone else, never, ever lend money to friends. You will not get it back. I've done it over the years. I've lent money to friends. And it doesn't come... In fact, you know, the weirdest thing is the less money you lend, the less chance it, you've got of coming back. They say, oh, you've got a fiver, which actually five pounds today, it's not an awful lot of money, is it? Have you got a fiver? You know, you won't get that back. You absolutely will not get that back. <clears throat> There's a bloke who comes to, comes to the karaoke dues that I do. Right? He's lent money left, right and centre. I know, because the people tell... Oh, you know a so-and-so. Um, I lent him some money. Um, I, I, I'm having... Tr I'm, don't, I said, um, forget it, mate. You ain't getting that back. And what annoys me is that often you lend money to someone, and I've seen this time and time again. It doesn't happen to me anymore, because I don't lend money. I lent a little bit here and there, five quid here, ten quid here, over the years, never came back, right? No more money. And people still come up. Oh, Chris, you know, a bit short of money today. You haven't got a fiver for it. I'm sorry, mate, I don't lend money to anyone. Just straight out with it. Don't beat around the bush. Just tell them straight. No, I don't lend money to anyone. Sorry. And then they, 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 they might accept that straight or they will go, oh, you'll know you'll get it back. No, I don't. How do I know that? How do I know I get it back? No, I won't. I won't get it back. I know I won't get it back. And you're made to feel guilty for asking for the blooming money. Ridiculous. Don't lend it. End. Stop. No. I'm sorry, I don't lend money. Oh, you know I get it back. Oh, I'm sure I will, but I don't lend money to anyone. End of story. And I'm not offended by you asking. Thank you. <laughs> Please, I mean, don't. Honestly, don't do it. Someone comes up to you, oh, I need some money for rent. It's not, your, it's not your problem. It will become your problem once you lend them the money because then you'll be trying to get it back. Then it's your problem. Do you want to create that problem for yourself? Of course you don't. Don't lend it. End of. If my... You know, I don't know, really. I don't know. So, so that's my thoughts on that. Um, and then the programme finished, really, and that was it. Did she get the £500 out of him? I don't know. I mean, he was quite young. 
I thought to myself, when I saw the boy, I thought, well, where are you going to get £500 from? He seemed a quite a decent person, but she was just, <laughs> just no personality at all. A little bit like some of the managers that run some of the places I work in. <laughs> um, Ronan says, if you look, it was a lot of Asian airlines. They want to reduce cost and increase um, income. What about, about those flying through the... Uh, on on the um over ukraine well i mean you know you you do worry don't you i i must say i'm a little bit worried about flying to israel because that's sort of the zone but you don't fly over palestine do you to get to israel or do you i don't i don't know but some, some of these missiles they they go for miles you don't need to be you know you don't need to be able to see the plane you just push a button and it finds a plane and blows it up there's a few people to tell me, oh, you're not going to Israel. You can't go to Israel. Well, you know, I want to do the Jesus things. That's the religion I was brought up in. I want to see these things. I really do. Uh, Daniel says, for £500, he better have got, got to second base. <laughs> Can you lend me 50p? No, Daniel, I can't lend you 50p. But if you come round and do a job for me, I'll give you 50p for that, all right? Um... Ben says, I bought my iPhone in Malaysia. I switched it to airplane mode last night. Now I can't... Oh, stop it, Ben! Stop it! You naughty man. <laughs> That's a sort of sense of humour. We don't mean anything by it. And it do does annoy me when people are offended. Well, I'm offended by that. Why, why, why have you said that to cause offence? No, we haven't. It's a sense of humour. You have to laugh at life. Otherwise, you'll walk around with a miserable face all the time. A little bit like the new manager at one of the places I work. <laughs> ben says, um, if you lend once, they will come back again. Yeah, never, ever lend money to people. I'm, I'm absolutely serious with that. Um, Ronan says, when are you going? October. I'm going to Israel in October. I'm very much looking forward to that. Uh, finally on the show today... Oh, hang on a minute. I've got a water... Do you know, I haven't had time to open this. This is a water bill, boys and girls. Now, I went over to a water meter a year ago. Uh, no, about two years ago. Two, two and a half years ago now. And I've only had one bill since then. I don't know why, but that's the way it is. My water rates were a touch under £400 a year. Since going over to the meter, it's come down considerably. Now, I don't know what this is going to say... This is the water bill for January to July this year. Eighty pounds. Eighty quid. Oh, hang on a minute. January to March. January to March. Yeah, eighty. It's not bad, is it? Eighty pounds and seventy-six pence. So that's is that six months? Yeah. So that's six months. You see. So double that. So eighty hundred and sixty pound a year instead of four hundred. That's not bad, is it? Eh? Right. Are you flying with BA? Of course I'm flying with BA, Ronan. What other airline is there to fly on? You've got to wave. We'll take more care of you. Fly the flag. Fly the flag. Um, Eloise, where is your vacation? Are you listening this morning, Eloise? How fantastic is that? Going to Israel in October. Going for seven, seven nights. Uh, staying in Tel Aviv. What's the name of the hotel? Something. Something on by the sea. It's, it's a chain hotel. It might be Hilton on the sea or something like that. I can't remember now. Yeah, seven days. I'm hoping to see um, uh, Jerusalem, uh, the Dead Sea, Bethlehem, the Wailing Wall, and Jericho. You know, all the religious things. I, I want to see all these things. I'm a bit nervous. You know, do they speak English very well out there? I don't know. Because they don't even use real letters, do they? It's like squiggly lines. <laughs> squiggly lines. So I'm, I'm looking forward to... Uh, and, and, and meeting the Israeli people. There's, there's a few... Uh, perhaps I can find a karaoke night there. And learn Hebrew while I'm there. Daniel says, £80 for a water bill. You can't be washing your dirty sides. I am washing. It's only 80 quid. So what it is, hardly use any water. 
flush the toilet once a week, you know, when it's full up. It's all you need to do, isn't it? <laughs> Ronan says, you'll be fine. They will get you there. British Airways is, is very, very good. Ben says, don't go with Virgin. Never trust an airline that won't go all the way. Ben, will you stop these jokes today, dear? We're not in a live stage situation here. This is radio and television, dear. We can't say these jokes. Someone might be offended. Might, might be offended. Might be offended. Go away and be offended somewhere else. Do you know I haven't ch- <laughs> haven't checked the emails, have I today? How stupid is that? Right, we're nearly finished today. Then I'm going to have my dinner. Ron is supposed to be coming around for dinner. I've got it in the oven. We've got jacket potatoes and a medley of vegetables and tomatoes and things like that. Uh, Millie in Minnesota says, Hi, Chris. Could you do a birthday tribute for my dad on his birthday, uh, which is today on the 19th of July? Uh, uh, Dad's not with her anymore, but um, happy birthday to your dad. And she also sent in this little email here. Says, hi, Chris. First of all, I've been told by both my aunt Sandy and my mum to tell you that both of them send their love and hugs to you. Now, Millie is in Minnesota, USA. Um, and also there's a cottage with your name on it. Do you know, Millie, there's a lot of cottages with my name on it. I, I know my, my phone number is up in various cottages all over the place. Uh, it's Pelican Lake, Minnesota. Doesn't that sound lovely? Pelican Lake. I wonder if there are actually pelicans there. There were those great long beaks. Oh, by the way, I haven't seen the ducks this week. You know, the, the ducks that seem to be walking around randomly around Bracknell. Well, I haven't seen them this week. I hope they're okay. Um, if you want to come and stay with us there. <clears throat> so, um, thank you very much. She says, secondly, my heart is very heavy. As I write this, my cousin Melanie, who is Sandy's only daughter, has lupus. And is very se- severe decline as we speak. I've just returned from the cottage. Both my mother and I were given an update by Sandy about Melanie's condition while I was there. And it's grave to say the least. If, <coughs> excuse me. Even the doctors and specialists Melanie is under the care of, who are experts in this insidious disease, have run out of answers. Nothing has responded. And I didn't know what lupus was. So I looked it up on the internet. And it's a, a, an incurable immune system illness, probably generic in origin and mainly suffered by females. It can affect any part of the body, and that's the danger. So I st- still wasn't quite sure what it was. It says lupus can produce many symptoms, and family doctors often fail to recognise it. Um, a large number of a, a, a number of major organs can be damaged in an irreversible way: uh, kidneys and the skin, heart, lungs, and brain. Symptoms to look out for: joint and muscle pain, extreme tiredness that won't go away no matter how much you rest, rashes, depression. Anemia, feverishness, headaches, possible hair loss, mouth ulcers, all could be part of it. So, um, yes, uh, not a very nice thing, lupus. Uh, Millie says, currently Melanie is unable to eat or keep anything down in severe pain due to arthritis and vasculitis, both of which are as a direct um, result of lupus. As you know, my family and I have endured a lot of loss over the last few years, and to be honest, the thought of facing one more has absolutely knocked me uh, mentally and emotionally yes it's, it's dreadful isn't it I mean it really is dreadful but um, uh, thank you for that and um, uh, good luck good luck to you all there ok um, Anne says do they have weight roses is it in Israel well I hope so dear where else am I supposed to do my shopping I did pop in there on Thursday this week on my own usually I go with Ron and I went on my own this week. Oh, it was lovely. So quiet. So quiet without him. Because he goes in. As soon as he walks in, he walks straight over to the customer services desk and starts talking to the, to the ladies on there. Who are lovely, you know. But I'm thinking, oh, for Christ's sake, shut up and let them go along with the work. Well, apparently, I went in. No, I didn't. Was it yesterday? I went in there. Oh, I can't remember. I, I don't know. Wednesday or Thursday. And she says, she says, oh, you're on your own today. I said, oh, yeah, it's going to be lovely and peaceful today without Ron here. She said, oh, he was in last night with the other one. I said, oh, with the boyfriend. I said, he said, she, 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 she said, yeah. I said, I suppose he had a lot to say as usual. She said, well, he, he came over for a chat and then they went off shopping. Five minutes later, the boyfriend came back to the customer service because Ronnie had disappeared. Because <laughs> he just walks off. He just walks off. Or, when you're out with him, he walks ten feet in front of you at the speed of light. You know, whoosh, he's gone. 
Oh, where's he gone now? And then, if you're walking around a supermarket, because I've started doing it, I can't think... Well, you don't want to stand next to me in the supermarket, but, uh, then, then I, I, I don't want to stand next to you anymore. So I just walk off as well now. And eventually, he realises, you know, because he doesn't see what's going on around him. He realises you've got... And you get a phone call while you're walking around the supermarket. Hello, where are you? You know, beans aisle five. Vegetarian section, aisle two. Or talking to lady on cake counter. Because he knows all the staff now. So he starts at the... And I think, you know, I'm not sure he, do, he doesn't do much shopping. He just goes in there and he works his round way all the stuff. He starts off with the people on customer services. Talking to them. Then he moves over to the fish counter and has a word with them. Then next to that, the meat counter and has a word with them. And then... A little bit further, stops at the cake and bread section and has a chat with him. He does. He, wo he works his way around all the staff. Talking and talking and talking. And then we usually meet for a cup of tea at the end. and We have a tea. We get a free cup of tea and a cake. Now, I have very little cake now. Very, the only time I have cake now is when I go to Waitrose, maybe once a week. And then I don't always have it when I go. It might be, I probably have a cake now once every two weeks. In fact, I had one this week while I was on my own. I had this custard tart thing with loads of blueberries on it. Very, very tasty indeed. I mean, that was, that was really nice, that. Um, and, and, and that's it. So, it. so I hope there are Waitrose in Israel, Anne. And it will be much quieter because Ron isn't there. <laughs> uh, who am I going on holiday with uh, no one I'm going on my own going on my own uh, I think that's all today is that all today Ronan says Chris they are the best customers what the ones that come around? yeah but he just talks and talks and talks he don't shut up sometimes I'm in the kind of shut up you know these people who talk on and on and on what's all that about I really don't know some people can go on for an hour and a quarter and not take a break. Just like I've been doing on this show. And it's time to go, boys and girls. Time to go. Let me just clear up the messages now. Anything else to read you? Because I don't like to miss anything out. No, nope, that's it today. That's it today. And I'm going down. Do you know what's coming? The smell coming up my, my, my stairs of the dinner. Um, I've got... F there's... Four small jacket potatoes in the oven at this moment. They've been in there now an hour and ten, an hour and twenty-five minutes, so they're going to be done. And there's like a big bowl, Pyrex bowl of vegetables, and it's got up in there chopped up onions. Uh, there's a whole bowl of garlic I've crushed and put over that. There's homegrown little cherry tomatoes, right? Because I had two hanging baskets with cherry tomatoes. Oh, you get loads, loads of them. So I've got loads of little tomatoes in there. Um, two peppers chopped up olive oil on the top and mushrooms and so it comes out the oven and you put that on there with a little bit of springed up cheese very very tasty indeed thank you very much and that's my dinner time to go boys and girls uh, just before i go please please have a look at my brand new website now i've got quite a lot of urls there's chrisreardon.co.uk unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk unitedkingdomtalktv.co.uk there's England Talk. .co.uk, there's United Kingdom Radio.co.uk, and there's a United Kingdom Talk.com. I've got all those URLs that's collected over the years, and they were pointing to various different places. Whatever URL you, you go to now, it will take you to the same page, and from there you can decide where you where you want to go. At the top, at the very top, I think, is where you get all the video shows, whether it's the recorded ones or the live ones. Under that, there's the audio-only version of my long show. Um, that will take you to that page, or you can click the iTunes link. You can go to YouTube, subscribe to... Uh, sorry, you can go to iTunes and subscribe to the audio version of the show, OK? By the way, you can always go to YouTube and subscribe to that on there as well. Uh, underneath that, I think, or just on the right, <coughs> it tells you all the regular 
venues that I'm playing at at the moment, whether I'm doing a quiz, karaoke or DJ, that's on the right. Just under that it says I'm looking for a Friday night venue at the moment to do perhaps a karaoke night or maybe a DJ night. And then right at the bottom there, there is a contacts thing with uh, if you want to send an email or anything like that. Uh, and uh, oh, at the top right hand side, there's the Facebook, Twitter and an email up there as well. So have a little look there. Use any of the URLs you've been losing. Uh, the main one, of course, uh, is unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. All right, I'm disappearing now. Uh, night up in Coventry tonight. A long, long way to go to Coventry. Now I must run downstairs, as Daniel has kindly reminded me, and get that pilot light out. Save those pennies. <laughs> See you soon. Thanks for watching and listening. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.